Gordon Parks, at age 88, has had a prolific career as a world-famous photographer for Life magazine, as a best-selling novelist, as the first black director of a Hollywood studio film, and as a composer and poet and pianist. He is most famous for his poignant pictures of racism and poverty, and in film for directing the 1970s classic Shaft. He is now the subject of an HBO documentary called Half Past Autumn, The Life and Works of Gordon Parks, which tells the whole story of an artist's diverse career in every medium from film to music to ballet. I am pleased to have him back on this program. Welcome back. Thank you. Well, how are you? Pretty good, John. You look good. Well, for 105. <laughs> <laughs> now, why do we call this Half Past Autumn? Half Past Autumn? Yeah, why is that the title of this documentary? Well, I think that I've uh, associated my lifetime with seasons of the year. Yes. And I think I, saw, I naturally start off with spring, yes. summer, fall, fall autumn, yeah. winter. And I, at this point, 88, I'm In considered... Fall. Yes, I You're a half-past autumn. Half-past autumn. I mean, there's no need to rush into winter no, unless you have no to. No rush into it. No, I don't <laughs> expect winter to come for a long time. <laughs> All right, take a look at this. This is a clip from a documentary about him uh, talking about some of his beginnings as a wait in a rail car and how he first discovered uh, his love for photography. Here it is. I was a waiter on a railway running between St. Paul, Minnesota, in Seattle, Washington, and then Chicago. There was not too much I could get my first three children being a waiter on a railway. A very mediocre job. And, uh, I couldn't expect to put the kids through college. I just wanted a better life, so I was always aspiring to do something different. During the layover in Chicago, instead of going out on the town, I had the pleasure of dropping into the Art Institute on Michigan Avenue, looking at the masters. And I would also see a movie. And one day I saw the bombing of Panay by the Japanese. With Japanese advance on the national capital paves the way directly for the tragedy of the Panay. The photographer had stayed by his post and watched the sinking of the boat. And I thought that was very courageous the way he'd stayed there. And suddenly someone uh, announced over the intercom that Norman Alley, the photographer, was at the theater. And he jumped out on stage in a white suit at tremendous applause, and uh, I thought that was very glamorous. This is not, this is not the first film about you. You did one yourself for PBS, right? Yes, I did. And then it was Learning Tree was essentially your life as a young man. Yes, that no. was a full-length feature film. Yeah and uh, taken from the novel I wrote, which was called The Learning Tree. Yeah. You've written music, written poetry, photo photography, film. When have you been the happiest? It's difficult to say. When I, I, I've been the happiest, I must say, when they, they all, all of them came together as one. Uh, and perhaps that was when I was elected to direct the first novel I wrote, The Learning yeah. Tree, for Warner, for Warner Brothers. That was the first time that a, a black director had an opportunity yeah. to do a studio film. Uh, that's right. Not only that, they asked me not to only direct it, but to write the music, to write the screenplay, and produce it as well as, as direct it. So I had all those particular things that I was been working toward all these years. Uh, to come together, you know, as one, and I was frightened to death, but here I was, and here's my chance, and go for it. I mean this with with seriousness. What would you change about your life, about you? I don't think I'd change. Knowing the way it's turned out, I wouldn't change anything about it. I think if sometimes uh, if. I feel as though if, 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 for instance, I had been born a rich white boy, right, gone to Harvard, right, or Yale, or right. Princeton, or so forth, uh, it may have been a different life. I would have expected to be a, 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 
perhaps a physician or a lawyer or a scientist mm -hmm. or something that I would have had to stick to. Yeah. This way I didn't finish high school. Yeah. I was frightened to death of, 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 of failure. And so I, it, it was not any genius attached to it. It was just a matter of my being able to eat breakfast the next morning after my mother died. Yeah. I had to become a man overnight. How old were you? About 14 and a half, yeah. or 15 years old. So it was a matter of survival rather than genius. And I look back at it today when people are talking about Renaissance man and right. so forth. So well, as, I, as I've said before, I don't even know how to spell Renaissance yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? But well, you're as close as I again. wouldn't change uh, my life. I, I wouldn't want any kid to suffer what I suffered in the early days of my life back in the state of Kansas. When well, because of race and, racism and poverty. And racism and bigotry, poverty, certain certain amount of poverty. We were poor, but my father kept us yeah. well fed. You were poor and you didn't know it. Didn't, didn't know it. Uh, uh, so I, 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 I wouldn't want any kid to suffer what I suffered. Yeah. But yet and still, I have no regrets for what I suffered because whatever I suffered has made me whatever I've become. Your art, your art came out of that pain. It, I always get a feeling when I'm at the piano composing, uh, I'm painting, or I'm doing poetry, uh, or photography. Somehow or another, it, it links with the past, you know. When you were growing up and, and making it, making it, Life magazine, if you're a photographer, is making it big time. Mm -hmm. You were, in a sense, you were within the establishment, so to speak. Yes. Um, at that time, did you feel an obligation to other African Americans? Or did you just say, look, the best thing I can do Truthfully, uh, when I walked into the Life magazine to show Wolf and Hicks yeah. uh, my photographs without an appointment, and he had attempted to kick me out until I insisted that he look at one or two photographs, uh, I went in on my own. You know, I wasn't thinking about the race right. or anything. Like that. I would be very honest about it. It was only after I became a Life photographer that I knew that I must assume the responsibility that it would take to, 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 to consider myself an excellent photographer so that I could open the door for other black writers and photographers after me. But my first worry was getting on the staff, and that's what I worked at. Take a look at this. This is, speaking of Life magazine, when you went to Paris in 1952, roll tape. In 1952, life assigned Parks to its Paris Bureau. It was considered a choice assignment. I needed Europe, especially Paris. Life magazine sent me to Paris to live. I hadn't been on staff over a year. Usually you have to wait five or six or seven years to get an assignment like Paris or London. Paris became my beautiful mistress, seducing me with the color and the compositions of Degas, Brock, Bonnard, Picasso, Van Gogh, Chagall, and other masterful artists. Gradually, they would influence all my work especially in fashion. Sally Kirkland, who was a fashion editor at Life at the time, was one who encouraged me more or less to let my models move. And so I worked up a scheme of letting the model move, and I moved with her, shooting at a slow speed. And you're taking your chances because you had to get her in focus, keep her in focus, and move with her. And that's 
what I did. I ate at the Café du Mago on the left bank where Balzac or Baudelaire might have eaten. Walked along the River Seine, Place Vendôme, the Rue de la Paix and Montmartre, high above the city in the shadows of Sacre Coeur. Looking down on the classical age of Moliere, seeing Notre Dame where Napoleon was crowned emperor. Paris served those inner desires that had been hampered by racism back in America. You have said to me before that I said, when I ask about, of all these talents, which two did you hold most dear? And you said poetry and creating music. Mm -hmm. I suppose that if I had my druthers, yeah. and if, if Providence were to will me only two particular things, I, I would probably write, just write poetry and compose music. Would you really? I think that at this yeah. point. As a photographer, what is it that you like to photograph most? Is it journalism? Uh, is it art? Is it? it uh, it's, it's a very difficult question you pose because the pictures that I made that I have become the most important pictures were pictures that I wished that I never had to take with people who were impoverished, people in need, and I suppose that I pointed my camera at people mostly who needed someone to say something for them, they who couldn't speak for themselves. So you take a picture of a little Brazilian boy, or a picture of a kid in Harlem who was in need. Uh, it may have been turned out to be the best picture, but it wasn't the picture that I really uh, uh, considered something that I would like to have taken. I hated taking it, but I had to do it. Uh, same way with crime across America when life sent me on a spree from New York all the way to San Francisco. And I saw some of the most uh, outlandish and, uh, things and, uh, as a, <clears throat> a crime photographer for a few months. Uh, things that won't send me back home immediately. I, I, I was so afraid of it, what I was seeing, mm. and what it would do to me and do to my personality do the rest of my life, actually. What have you most wanted to do that you haven't? There's nothing, to tell you the truth, <laughs> Charlie, that, that I haven't done. That I wish that I could do everything I've done better. Right. I wish I could compose better music. I wish I could take better photographs. I wish I could write better poetry and write better novels and so forth. That's all I yeah. wish for. I've, I've had my share of doing Right now, all, as I say, all is left is do it better. Uh, the documentary is called Half Past Autumn. The book is called A Star for Noon. The artist is Gordon Parks. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.